In this video I'm going to be going through the multi-layer optics material in Keyshot. So this material allows you to add multiple layers to it with varying properties such as thickness and refractive index in order to manipulate the way light travels through it. So to get started I'm going to go over to the right and change the diffuse material into a multi-layer optics material and you'll notice that the part goes pitch black. This is because as you can see in the layer list table here we currently don't have any layers so if I go over to the left and add thin film layer new dielectric see now we can see that the part has got a kind of glass like material this first layer is going to be the base layer so layer thickness as you can see has been greyed out and you can't change that because it's the first and base layer once we add a second dielectric that option becomes available the layer thickness option is pretty self-explanatory it's just the thickness of that thin film layer over the top of the previous layer so in this case it's 50 nanometers this can go all the way up to 200 but we're just going to leave that at 50. the second option is the layer material so you can see there's a drop down menu and it has both the dielectric 1 and dielectric 2 that we have in the layer list as well this also contains any deleted layers that you might have deleted from the layer list previously so if I add in a new dielectric dielectric 3 and I then delete that I can get that back by going into layer material and it's still there at the bottom alternatively if you want to just get rid of that you can then select it and press the bin icon and it will be deleted from both the layer material and you can't get it back in the layer list either next one down is the material name so we can change the name of each material so if I go to dielectric one I can change that to base layer material just to keep things organized next to the refractive index so this is the control for how much light will bend or refract as it passes through the material so the default 1.5 is pretty accurate for simulating most types of glass. The Abbey number controls the dispersion of light. So a value of 0 disables the dispersion entirely. And a low value will show heavy dispersion. And as you increase that number, the effect becomes more and more subtle. So it's recommended around 35 to 55 is quite a good starting point. Edit specification, if I click on that, this basically includes all the layers in a text format. So you can see base layer material and it has some of the options there. Dielectric 2, if we change the Abbey number from 50 to say 35 and n represents the refractive index so we could change that to let's bump it up to seven and then once we press accept you'll see those options change the encrypt specification means that you can press this once you've finished your material this will protect the specifications of your material it will hide the information about the layers in the material and it can't be edited any further so that's worth bearing in mind before you hit that button. The colour option means you can change the colour of the light once it enters the surface. So it doesn't matter what the colour of the light is before it enters the multi-layer optic material. It will then take on this colour once it's changed to say red. You can see that that light then takes on that colour once it enters the body of the material. The transparency distance controls the depth of the color selected so once this is turned to red increasing this will make the color less prominent and the lower the transparency distance will show the color more in thin areas of the model if I show you the two extremes so if I go from 12 to 100 you can see the material and color change there I'll leave that at 50 now the refractive index outside is setting allows you to simulate the meeting point between two different refractive materials so you can see that change as I increase 
And finally, the simulate substrate dispersion tick box. Uh, this option, if you enable it, will simulate caustics in the material, assuming that the material is transparent. And if I enable that, you can see that caustics has been enabled. So with those options explained, I'm going to reset this back to white and create a few different layers with different settings to try and create an interesting result at the end. Now if I let that render out, you can see that adding in, in this case, four different layers and just changing the refractive index and thickness and playing around with these different settings can create some pretty cool results with lots of different variations in colors. So give it a go and uh, if you have any questions then please just leave them down in the comments below and I'll get back to you.